Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. If you ask me, the coaster type with the best general aesthetic in the game is undoubtedly the wooden roller coaster. The intricate support work, rustic look and the ability to make the color brown look great are second to none. All of that is why today we are going to take a closer look at how the wooden coaster exactly works. Before we do that though, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of this video, which is Opera GX. Opera GX is a browser that is optimized in particular for gaming and considering the content of my channel I assume that most of you watching do like to play video games. After they approached me a few weeks ago I installed the browser and I have been using it since and I must say it's really great. One of the best features is the GX Corner, which is one place where you can find all things gaming. It has a release calendar, a list of free games that you can play, a list of great deals, easy links to video game stores and video game trailers and lots of gaming news. If you don't particularly like the way that it looks, it is very easy to customize. In the easy setup menu on the top right you can quickly switch between light and dark mode, change your color accent and pick a wallpaper. There are preset wallpapers but you can also change it to an image of your favorite park if you really want to. If you're like me, the biggest barrier for switching browsers is that you lose all of your settings but Opera GX has a very easy solution for that. You simply go to settings and then synchronization, click on import bookmarks and settings, select your previous browser and click import. You can also add any extension that is in the Google Chrome App Store to Opera by just clicking the add to Opera button. Opera GX is available for your phone as well and that can be synchronized with your computer making for an all around great experience. I recommend you all to download and try out Opera GX and you can find a link to it in the description and in the pinned comment. Big thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video and let's now get back to the wooden coaster. I honestly can't praise the wooden coaster enough for how amazing it looks, just look at it. There is no other coaster type in the game that has a look as iconic as the wooden coaster. This magnificent design was made by my friend Charjals back in 2017 and it is possibly my favorite wooden coaster I've ever seen. The trees with custom colors combined with the differently colored sections of the coaster make this the ultimate autumn themed ride. Because the track and support design are a full tile wide, the wooden coaster immediately stands out in almost any park that you build it in, making it a great attention grabber. This makes it a great centerpiece for an area or even an entire park, especially if it's decorated in a rustic or medieval style. Apart from the looks, the wooden coaster is also just a great coaster type. It doesn't quite reach levels like the Giga Coaster or the Twister Coaster, but it is definitely in the top third of all coaster types. First off, it's decently cheap. It's obviously more expensive than something small like the Steel Wild Mouse, but it is cheaper than almost all big steel coaster types. For example, the classic wooden coaster design wood chip costs a little over 7000 euros. The same design for a corkscrew coaster costs a bit over 9000 euros, which is more than 25% more expensive. Not only is the wooden coaster fairly cheap, it also gets much higher stats for the same design. The wooden version of wood chip has 0.9 more excitement and 1.8 more intensity and nausea than the corkscrew version. The higher intensity is actually a good thing for smaller designs as it means that you can charge more for it. Under the same circumstances you can charge more than 30% more for the wooden version of wood chip than the corkscrew version. This means that even if you have multiple medium sized wooden coasters in your park you can just set the price at like 10 bucks and the guests will pay it for over 1.5 in game years. This makes the wooden coaster one of the best casual money makers in the game. With casual I mean when you use designs that aren't optimized. 
Sure, a whole bunch of micro coasters or launched free falls will make you more money, but they are clearly only built with the intent to optimize. You can build an epic looking wooden coaster and it still makes a lot of money for its cost. It's a good thing that the wooden coaster is great at being a casual money maker as it's terrible at being a micro coaster. This is because of its stat requirements. Stat requirements are certain limits that a coaster's stats must get to, otherwise its excitement, intensity and nausea stats are penalized. For most coaster types, including the wooden coaster, the stats will be divided by 2 for every stat requirement that you fail. The wooden coaster has 5 of them, which are a drop of at least 9 meters, at least 2 drops, a top speed of at least 36 km per hour, a length of at least 370 meters and at least 0.1 negative g's. Four of these are easy, but the requirement for length means that you cannot build a small wooden coaster that has decent stats. Well, 370 meters is still not all that big, but it's massive compared to the microcorkscrew or a 4x4 wild mouse. As a result, the wooden coaster doesn't quite have the optimization functionality of a lot of other coaster types, but it makes up for that by how good its normal designs are. The length requirement is long enough that sometimes I build a wooden coaster on a tight budget or in a small space that I think is long enough but doesn't make it and has terrible stats as a result. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you can relate to this and now you know why that happens. Despite all that, there is actually one aspect that slightly improves the wooden coaster's ability to be spammed and that is its high right bonus value. The right bonus value is how many guests a ride attracts to the park. With 105, the wooden coaster is only bested by the Giga Coaster and Twister Coasters 120. This means that building a couple of wooden coasters in your park makes sure that your park can support a lot of guests. The wooden coaster is a fairly standard coaster type in that it doesn't get too many crazy elements outside of the standard ones like helixes and brakes. It does get one really cool and unique element though which is the water splash. It can be used as just a fun element that gives about 0.2 extra excitement but it can also be used as a fail safe brake. If you don't use block brakes and the brakes on your coaster fail, one train can crash into the other train at the station, exploding and killing everyone on board. If the train naturally enters the station slow enough, then it won't crash and explode if a brake failure happens. A water splash slows down a train that goes through it and since water follows the laws of physics, it can't suddenly lose the ability to slow down the train. A fully loaded train will be slowed down from 75 to 59 km per hour by one water splash and two splashes in a row slow it down to 43 km per hour. You don't get any extra stats for that second water splash by the way, only for the first one. If you want to make it look extra good, you can raise the water around the water splash element like I've done here. It really looks like the coaster is going through the lake. The wooden coaster also has access to the vertical loop. This isn't a very uncommon element, but you might not expect it on the wooden coaster. When Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 was created, there was one wooden coaster in the world with a vertical loop, which was Son of Beast in Kings Island. Chris Sawyer found that interesting enough to add it to the game and I'm glad he did. The vertical loop is a great way to quickly get fairly high stats on your wooden coaster. The wooden coaster gets a relatively high amount of excitement from g-forces compared to coaster types like the looping and corkscrew coaster. A vertical loop gives a lot of vertical g's so it's a quick way to get more excitement. Earlier I said that the fact that the wooden coaster has a fairly high intensity rating for its size is actually a good thing for smaller designs. However, that also means that it can be a hindrance when you're building a big coaster. 
Especially if your design has inversions, it's quite easy to suddenly get over 10 intensity without there being a clear culprit. If you're building a big design that has like a 40 meter tall first drop, I would advise not including any inversions in order to keep the intensity rating down. If your design still has over 10 intensity, it's probably the number of drops that's the main issue. As I've noticed that in my designs, I easily get carried away and include like 20 or more drops. For a complete tutorial on how to reduce your intensity rating, watch this video, which is linked in the description. It's quite old and the video and audio quality aren't great compared to how they now are on my channel, but the information is still as true as ever. The wooden coaster has quite a few different train types. The standard one is a 4 seater with a maximum length of 6 cars, which was extended to 7 in Open RCT2. This is definitely my favorite train type for the wooden coaster. There is also a 6 seater version of the same style, which is slightly more compact. For a real scary experience, there is also the reversed 6 seater train type. This gives your ride 2% more excitement, 10% more intensity and 15% more nausea. If your ride is too intense and you're using these trains, it might be a good idea to switch to different trains if you have another type available. Both of the 6 seaters have a maximum length of 4 cars which was increased to 6 in OpenRCT2. The last train type from the base game is the articulated trains. These can only seat 2 guests per car, but they have a very high limit of 12 cars per train. They also give 4% extra excitement and 2% extra nausea while giving no extra intensity. The expansions introduced two more train types, but they're not very good. The minecart trains are just different looking standard trains and the stagecoach cars look funny, but lose speed way too quickly as they're very light. Before we take a look at the designs that I came up with, I want to take a look at the pre-built designs of the wooden coaster, because boy are there a lot of pre-built designs. With 30 different designs from Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, 4 from Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 and another 25 user created designs from Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, it has a total of 59 pre-built designs. This is by far the most out of any ride type in the game. Back in the day, one of my favorites was the Great White Whale because of its very high excitement rating. It also has perfectly timed interlocking loops, which is amazing to watch. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme and nowadays I prefer to build my own designs if I want to have a big coaster, but when I was young I used it all the time. Another two designs, or four depending on how you count it, I used to love were the Colossus and Rolling Thunder racing coasters. Each has two different tracks which perfectly fit together. Not only do the tracks fit together perfectly, but the scenery does so too. This absolutely blew my mind back when I was like 7 years old. It is still very satisfying to find the exact location for the second track and have that ghost appear and then build it. So now onto my own designs. I made a video about 5 useful wooden coaster designs years ago and some designs will return while others won't. As usual you can find a download link to all of them in the description. The first design is the smallest that meets all the stat requirements for when you need a super cheap wooden coaster. It comes in two flavors, the absolute cheapest and a slightly more expensive version that is more compact and has a little bit higher stats. As I said before, it's not recommended to use the wooden coaster for this, but with certain weird challenges you might sometimes have no choice. This one, just like all other designs in this video, has the chain lift speed maxed out at 11 km per hour. This is to increase the throughput ever so slightly as the ride duration is now a little shorter. Actually, you can go cheaper and smaller, but only in open RCT2. 
In OpenRCT2, the wooden coaster gets the reverse incline shuttle operating mode, which allows you to make a design like this. The reason this design can be cheaper is that the train travels every track piece twice, making the ride length twice as long as the track length. It is also only two tiles wide, which can be useful in some situations. The next design is perfect for if you want a small and efficient wooden coaster that also looks nice. Earlier I mentioned that if your wooden coaster is large enough you can put the price at 10 bucks and even if you have multiple wooden coasters in your park which decreases the value it will be fine for over one and a half years. This design already has high enough stats for that to work so it's an amazing money maker. If you really don't want to micromanage at all you can just put the price at 8 euros and you will be fine for 5 years which is long enough for almost all scenarios. If you want more info about how the ride prices exactly work I've linked two videos about ride prices in the description. This design has a similar idea to the previous one but it's quite a bit larger. It has over 9 intensity and almost 7 excitement for a fairly cheap price. At the same time it also looks quite nice. With a longer station it can support 3 standard trains of 6 cars for quite a high throughput. This coaster can easily be the most profitable coaster in your park. With a length of 683 meters it is also long enough for parks where guests are harder to attract. If you need a coaster that is at least 600 meters long and has at least 6 excitement for those parks where guests are harder to attract and you don't care about anything else, you can also use this design. It's only barely cheaper than the previous one but its footprint is only half the size. It's not much good for making money though, but if you charge for the entrance that's not a problem. Up next is a design that I built several years ago and is a nice example of what a medium sized compact wooden coast without any inversions can look like. It's not super optimized for anything, but it's still a good design that I've used in several parks when I needed a wooden coaster. The color scheme is a bit ugly, but I chose these colors at the time and I've gotten used to them on this design now. This is also a great example of how the big wooden coaster tracks can make a design look so much better than something like the small looping coaster tracks. Here is a design that you probably weren't expecting. It's not very compact, not very cheap and doesn't do anything special, so what is it doing here? Well, it is a design I built in Forest Frontiers on a livestream a little over a year ago and I absolutely love it. As you can see it works very well with the mining theme, but I'm sure that it will also work well with many other themes. I even did something that I don't do very often which is use block breaks and they're even reasonably well timed. I think this is a good example of a somewhat more realistic design that is still fairly quick to build and quite efficient. The last design of today is balancing on the edge of too much intensity, but it just about works. It combines a tall first drop with interlocking vertical loops for the ultimate excitement machine. This ride has 8.4 excitement which you can push even higher with stuff like scenery and interaction with other rides. Not only does it have interlocking loops but it manages to do that while only being 6 tiles wide. This is the narrowest possible if you have interlocking loops. Instead of the standard trains it uses 3 11 car long articulated trains which give slightly more excitement. Contrary to what I said earlier this design does not have a chain lift speed of 11 km per hour as that gives it over 10 intensity. Both 8 and 9 km per hour do manage to keep it below 10. For a price of less than 11,000 euros these are really good stats. 
While you're obviously free to build any of these designs in your own parks as I do give a download link, I do recommend that you use these designs as inspiration for your own designs. There is nothing more satisfying than building a good custom roller coaster that you can see your guests enjoy and see make a lot of money. And with that we have reached the end of my longest ride overview to date. In conclusion, the wooden coaster is an amazing coaster type that looks magnificent and is also really good. It is definitely my favorite coaster type for building pretty rides and one of my favorite coaster types overall. You can never go wrong with building a wooden coaster in your park. If you enjoyed this video do consider giving it a like or leave a comment. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.